Hello everyone. I've had a few questions since posting my video of my lighting setup. Um, it's been over a year ago. Um, basically about how to get everything talking to each other with DMXIS and TouchOS C and how to get it all working together. So I'll show you, I'm going to show you a brief tutorial on how to get them connected first and then we'll do some stuff with TouchOS C. First thing you're going to want to do to connect the iPad um, to your computer, you're going to want to be on the same Wi-Fi network or create an ad hoc network, which you should probably do in a gig situation and password protect it so nobody else can get on it. And then to get the core MIDI going on, um, we're going to open up audio MIDI setup, which I have a shortcut for it here, um, and make sure you open the MIDI studio window, which is this one here. Um, going to open network and I've already created a session to do that you just hit this plus symbol up here make a new session um, and make sure it's enabled over here and then on the iPad I'm gonna open up touch OSC and then as soon as I open it you'll see I've disabled OSC MIDI bridge MIDI mobilizer but I have enabled um, core MIDI because that's the only one I usually use um, after I've opened it, you'll see here there's something new popped up under directory. It has my iPad. So all I'll do is single click on it and hit connect. It's over here under participants and it's going. So now in TouchOSC, you'll be able to see on Core MIDI, it shows network session in and out and they're enabled. And at that point, you can jump over to DMXIS look at your preferences, MIDI hardware, and Core MIDI Network Session is a choice now. So that's the one you're going to choose. And I've got my layout here that I did from my other video. Um, and you can see it's, it's doing stuff now. Um, so that's basically how to get them talking to each other. Um, and next up I'll show you some of how I did the TouchOSC layout and how it works with DMXIS. Okay, and now I'll show you a little bit about how I set up <clears throat> my show. Um, in this case, it was for a DJ setup. Um, I used the masking in DMXIS to be able to control each group of fixtures individually. Um, that way I can have them all doing different things, trigger them at different times, <clears throat> since that's typically what you'd want to do in a DJ setup. Um, for this, that means I had to just use one bank for the whole thing which you're limited, I believe, to 100 presets per bank. And so I had to do a little bit of planning as to what I wanted it to do. Um, took lots of notes, you know, to decide, you know, I want solid colors on each type of fixture, chases, etc., strobing, those kind of things. So I kind of planned on how many scenes I wanted per fixture type, and at the same time planned um, how my Touch OSC layout was going to work with it. So these are all the scenes, <clears throat> basically a scene for each chase and each solid color of the wash lights, the, the LED panels, the strobes, the motor heads, the laser, and the Revo lighting effect. Um, over here in Touch OSC, this is the editor, um, all the buttons I just, I disabled OSC, um, or you don't have to enable it, it's actually still enabled, but you can just disable that since you're using MIDI. And under the MIDI tab, um, I just started at the bottom, which is C uh, minus two, and picked a MIDI channel. And all of the buttons I made note messages. The faders I made control change messages. And then just um, built the layout first um, based on how many, um, the blackout and how many um, scenes I wanted per fixture. And then to program them, just started at the bottom with the note messages and went on up with them. Um, the only odd, one of the odd things I had to do because the limitation of um, number of scenes, the gobo and color wheel on the motor heads I actually did not do with scenes. I did these as control change messages that were very specific um, with a limited range. Like that one's just zero, this one's just ten and they correspond, um, they're mapped to that fader in DMXIS so um, those specific numbers will change to that gobo or that color 
So that's one workaround I had to do to have enough room for it. In the last two tabs were just kind of extra. Um, I made a manual control section for the laser and for the Revo 4 since they can do so much that way you can just kind of play with them. Well, that's with a multi-fader on both of those and they're just control change messages again mapped directly to those faders. And then this one, it's also a manual control for the two motor heads. I made an XY pad also, um, just mapped again, control change messages mapped to the faders in DMXIS. This little bit here were extra scenes I had. So I just made them blank. That way if I wanted to make some scenes on the fly, I can do that and save them. Like if there was a, a mirror ball in the room, I could make a scene to point the motor heads at them and save them. And that way I can recall it easily enough. Um, after you do that, there's some trial and error, take lots of notes, that's how I did it. Um, get it loaded onto your iPad, and then I um, just started programming in the, uh, the scenes, and then the note messages correspond to these presets. And then on all the control changes, you just go into map in uh, the learn mode, I mean, and then um, just move the fader and that assigns it. Um, it was a lot of work, took a lot of time, but, but with planning, it's quite easy, you know, if you just know what you want to do in the first place, and then you can make all the tweaks after the fact. All right, so um, that is that with my DJ setup. Um, it worked really well um, at the gig, which was after that video I made. Everything worked really great. Um, as far as for our band, um, we don't have the opportunity to use our lighting much for the band, so I haven't actually programmed much in DMXIS for it. But I'll probably do a similar thing, though probably each song will have its own bank. Um, that way you have more options. And I'm not going to rely so much on the iPad control, though I will have it um, available to make changes on the fly. But um, we use Ableton Live um, when we perform live, so I'm going to program everything in um, for the lighting and tracks in it to change the presets and such. So I hope that helps out. Of course, leave comments if you have any more questions. Thanks for watching.